And the first one is a 74157. That's a quad two input mux. Quad because there's four of them. One, two, three, four. Two inputs. Each of them has two inputs, an A input and a B input. Okay, so quad two input mux. And just like every multiplexer, single output. And that's the 1y, 2y, 3y, 4y. And now this has two inputs. So two inputs only needs one data bit select, uh, excuse me, data selection bit. So each one of these data select bits is tied to a single data select. Okay. So for a, excuse me, for a high on that single data select, it's the B inputs go to Y. Low, A goes to Y. Okay. Now um, there's also an active low enable. And basically, when zero, the chip is enabled. When one, it's disabled. Okay. Next one you guys will probably run across is the 74151, which is an eight input mux. So if there's eight ins, if these guys are, are eight ins right there, how many data select positions would you need? Well, probably three bits because zero, 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 all the way to one, 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 one. That gives you positions from zero to seven. So S0, S1, S2, those are data select bits. And this is D0 through D7. There's an active low enable here. And that's our output Y. And even though every multiplex on Earth has only one output, this one has a bonus output. And that's called not Y. Basically, it'll just invert the data, uh, the data selected. OK? So now the 74151, like I said, is an 8 input mux. But let's say you get 16 bits that you want to, uh, excuse me, uh, 16 data sources that you want to switch from. Well, basically, what you can do is a 70, uh, second 74151 in conjunction to form a 16 bit multiplexer where the enable forms the fourth selection bit. So here's the first three selection bits right there. But the enable can form the, set, excuse me, the fourth one. And how you do that is just tie your enables together with an inverter in between. OK? So remember, it's an active low enable. So when this guy is a 0 right here, it's coming in here, it hits here, this guy is enabled. This guy turns into a 1, disabled. Now, when that fourth selection bit comes in, excuse me, the fourth, uh, yeah, the fourth data select bit comes in as a 1, it's coming in a 1 here. This guy is disabled. 0 there because it's an active low. This guy is enabled. And how you would tie that together is just do an OR in between. OK? So you can make 16-bit multiplexer using two of these guys. All right, uh, applications for multiplexers, unlimited. Um, one that you might be more familiar with, though, if you remember way, way back when in EET 111, 112, 113, remember the BK Precision Multimeter and how they had like a bunch of different modes that you always would get stuck in using the wrong mode. And I'd be like, dudes, come on, don't measure AC voltage using DC ammeter. You know, remember those things off to the side? These guys right here. And I had a single button next to each one and that would uh that would make it like say you pressed here ac ammeter and now that display would read ac amps and then you would go ahead and uncheck that one and put it to ohms and it would show you ohms there but notice how each one of these didn't have a display next to it that'd be pretty costly and, and wasteful you know you'd have like six different displays, but why not just use the same display? Well, that's what display multiplexing, one aspect of display multiplexing is, is you're using the same display for a number of different uh, functions here 
this right here, that's your data select. Um, it's a single, and you're using a, let's just use a, a single seven segment display um, just to make it a little bit easier. And so here is our single seven segment display, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And what is the chip with the active low outs? Uh, that is the BCD to uh, seven segment decoder. Well, it's 7447. So you put that guy right there next to it. 7447, their active lows. And you hook those guys up like so. And now what you do, all you do is just use a uh, 74157, which if you remember right, here, up here, which is our quad two input mux right here, this guy. And hook that up to the 74, 70, 74, 57, 74, 47, excuse me. Okay, and there's our 74, 157 right there. And by the way, I'm switching between two different applications here. Not all six of these. We'd be here all day. So let's go ahead and get rid of those. Okay, so here's our two four-bit numbers that are coming in, our A number and our B number. A's get fed to the A's. B's get fed to the B's in parallel. Now you go ahead and just go ahead and put a zero on your um, on your data select, and each one of these guys are tied together, and that zero is going to make the A come through. And what you're going to do is just tie your outputs to the multiplexers, the one, two, four, and eight weight of the 7447 BCD to seven segment decoder. Now what's happening is, is basically all the A's going through the multiplexer, going into the 7447. And it's lighting up on the uh, seven segment display. So let's let's say A happened to be zero zero one zero. So there's our two. And now B zero zero one one. So it would be a three, but it's not being displayed. All of a sudden we switch our data selector to ones. And now our Bs are going through our multiplexers, and they're getting the 1, 2, 4, and 8, 8 positions on the BCD to 7 segment decoder. And what it's going to do, it's going to show us a 3 rather than a 2, saving you all that weight of having all those displays. Okay? So, again, multiplexers influenced by time. As we go forward, a lot of these things that we're going to be working on, especially when we get to uh, memory and registers, Everything's going to be influenced by time. It's sequential. Is that a three? Yeah. Digital three? Okay, good. I'm, I was getting listexic there for a little bit. Okay, let's move on.